Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, the United States has managed to deter a pending Iranian attack against American interests in the Middle East. That after confirmed reports revealed that the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard's elite Quds Force, General Qasem Soleimani, ordered Iranian proxies in Iraq to target American installations and service members. Despite growing U.S. pressure, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani defiantly declared that the Islamic Republic will never bow to anyone. Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi announced Baghdad's intention to serve as a mediator between the United States and Iran and sent delegations to Tehran and Washington with the aim of alleviating the tense situation. The United States has managed to deter a pending Iranian attack against American interests in the Middle East. That after the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard's elite Quds Force, General Qasem Soleimani, ordered Iranian proxies in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon and Yemen to prepare for an imminent war. According to several confirmed Western intelligence reports, the top Iranian commander also instructed Iraqi militias, namely the Popular Mobilization Forces, to target American installations and service members across Iraq, a move that led Washington to withdraw all non-essential personnel from Iran's western neighbor and the expedited deployment of the USS Abraham Lincoln Strike Group to the region. Fearing a military confrontation between the United States and Iran that will inevitably devastate the entire Middle East, Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi insisted during a televised press briefing that except for individual cases, most Iraqi factions do not seek to exacerbate the volatile situation. <laughs> والتطرف إلا إذا كانت تصرفات فردية لم نجد أي طرف عراقي داخل العملية السياسية يريد دفع الأمور باتجاهات الحرب the Iraqi leader also revealed that Baghdad aims to serve as a mediator between Washington and Tehran الرؤية العراقية قريبة جدا من الرؤية الأوروبية جدا قريبة من الرؤية الأوروبية في التعامل مع هذه المسألة وكذلك نبحث مع الجانب الأمريكي ونبحث مع الجانب الإيراني ونرسل وفود خلال أيام قليلة إلى مختلف العواصم صاحبة العلاقة خصوصا طهران وواشنطن محاولة الدفع باتجاه التهدئة it is important to know that earlier this week on Sunday, a rocket was fired into Baghdad's heavily fortified green zone, exploding about one kilometer from the U.S. Embassy. While no group claimed responsibility for the attack, an Iraqi military spokesman said that the rocket fire emanated from the eastern part of the Iraqi capital, where many Iranian-backed militias are deployed. Furthermore, it is also important to stress that while Iraq's Shiite militias, numbering over 140,000 militants, were incorporated in 2016 into Iraq's military that falls under the authority of Iraqi Prime Minister Abdul Mahdi, the leadership of the most powerful Iraqi paramilitary alliance, the Popular Mobilization Forces, which is financed, trained and equipped by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards, are openly loyal to the commander of Iran's Quds Force, General Qasem Soleimani, the architect of Tehran's regional strategy. Meanwhile, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani defiantly declared that the Islamic Republic will never bow to anyone. In a televised nationwide address, the Iranian leader boasted over his country's resilience amid the ongoing standoff with the United States and accused Washington of cowardice in the face of Iranian power that, according to Rouhani, forced the Trump administration to retract its threatening statements. Sari. Our actions are a forceful answer to those who think they can force the Iranian nation to bow under pressure. The Iranian nation will never bow, has always held its head high, has always remained proud, and today it will continue to be the same. You can see that in an instant they make threats against us, and then in less than two hours, they are regretting making those threats. As soon as they make threats against great Iran, those who bear the real responsibility on the ground tell the White House that you have made a dangerous statement. The White House announces that Iranians should fear an imminent war. But two hours later, after pressure from the Pentagon, 
The U.S. president is coming out to apologize and to say that we have no intention to go to war, that we never had any intention to fight the Iranian people. This is because the power of our nation, a nation that is proud, brave and united. The defiant statement by the Iranian leader came after senior members of the U.S. Congress and Senate received separate classified intelligence briefings pertaining to the standoff with Iran. Following the sessions that were held behind closed doors, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo provided a general overview of the topics that were presented. So uh, I've got a couple quick points about the conversations we had with the House and the Senate today, and then I'll turn it over to Pat. First, we, we shared with both the House and the Senate our strategic campaign, the effort to push back against Iran's malign activity, 40 years of terrorist activity. And so we talked to them about that. We tried to place that or place the recent intelligence in context of that 40 years of history. And we walked through our efforts and our ultimate objective over the past days, which has been to deter Iran. Acting U.S. Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan took the opportunity to reiterate Washington's position in which all of the measures undertaken by the Trump administration aim to deter the Iranians from escalating the situation rather than provoking an all-out war. That intelligence is borne out in attacks and I would say it's also deterred attacks. We have deterred attacks based on our reposturing of assets, deterred attacks against American forces. Our biggest focus at this point is to prevent Iranian miscalculation. We do not want the situation to escalate. This is about deterrence, not about war. We're not about going to war. This is about continuing to protect our interests in the Middle East and conducting the missions that there, we are there to perform. Despite the concrete and elaborate intelligence briefings, U.S. lawmakers voiced mixed feelings over their convictions vis-à-vis -vis Tehran's dangerous activities and the way it should be dealt with. It was a very good briefing. They explained to us how the Iranian threat streams were different than in the past, that the attack on the ships and the pipeline uh, was coordinated and directed by the Iranian uh, government, the Ayatollah that we'd picked up strong intelligence that they had given the Shiite militia basically more running room and direction and that uh, attacks against American interests and personnel were imminent. The decision to send the Abraham Lincoln to the region was to try to deter uh, attacks against American personnel, not to invade or start a war. Let me be very brief and say that I think as most Americans know, way back when we were lied to, about the situation in Vietnam and we went into a war which ended up costing us 59,000 lives based on a lie. 2003 we were lied to in terms of uh, Iraq supposedly having weapons of mass destruction. We lost over 4,000 brave Americans and hundreds of thousands of people in the region were killed and forced to leave their homes. I believe that a war with Iran would be an absolute disaster, far worse than the war with Iraq. And I hope the American people tell this administration that we will not go to war uh, in Iran. Thank you for watching us. I would like to take this opportunity to personally thank all of you who support TV7 Israel News as your donations make the productions from Jerusalem possible. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. We will see you again tomorrow at the same time.